In this module, we shall know about the tool marks and their characteristics, the types of tool marks and how the matching of the tool marks can actually lead us to the tool which is involved in the crime. Now as we know that whenever two items come in contact with each other and if one of them is harder, the other is softer, then the harder item it can leave an impressed mark or a striated mark on the softer item. Now however, depending on how the harder item was constructed, these marks may or may not be used for the investigations in the crime. Now tool marks are nothing but your cuts, your stabs mark, the cut marks, the striations, the abrasions, the scratchings or compressions etc. Now some of the examples of the tool marks, they are slashed tires by knives, the open windows, the cut fence, cut wires or severe chains etc. Tool marks are nothing but the impressions which are left by a tool when it comes in contact with a surface. These tool marks they may show different types of characteristics depending upon the impression, its shape and how the mark has been created. Now depending on the force with which the marks have been put on, the tool marks can be divided into different categories. Now the examination basically of the tool marks holds an importance in the field of forensics investigations as it establishes a direct link between the tool mark and the tool that has been used for crime purposes. Now these impressions actually help in crime investigations. Let us now understand the definition of the tool marks, the characteristics of the tool marks, the types and how the forensic examinations is being done while matching the tool marks. When two items come in contact with each other, the harder item can leave an impressed or striated mark on the softer item. However, depending on how the hard item was constructed, these marks may or may not be used for identification purposes. Tool marks are sometimes referred to as striations, cuts, stabs, gouges, abrasions, scratches, indentations or compressions. Some examples of tool marks are slashed tires by knife, indented hammer strikes on door, pried open window, cut wires or fencing, severed chains and picked locks. Additionally, extrusion marks are found on most plastic bags. These marks from the manufacturing process can link a bag back to the roll or box of bags or two torn pieces of plastic bags to each other. Tool marks are the impressions left by a tool on coming in contact with a surface. These tool marks show different types of characteristics depending on the type of impression, its shape and how the mark was created. Depending upon the force with which the marks have been put, the tool marks are divided into different categories. The examination of tool marks is an important factor in the field of criminalistics as it can directly establish the link between a tool mark and the tool that created it. These impressions also help to reconstruct the crime scene. Let us study tool marks in detail. A tool is a hard object which when forcefully comes into contact with another object leaves a mark on the softer one like a screwdriver, plier or an arc joint plier, hammer and wire cutters etc. 
A tool mark can be defined as an impression left by a tool when it comes into contact with the surface. If the tool contacts the surface with a large force, it leaves behind an indentation and the pattern of the tool is permanently reproduced on the surface. These marks play a very vital role in forensic science as the criminals have a tendency to use tools for committing burglaries or other crimes such as cold-blooded murders. For example, if a burglar tries to enter a house by breaking the lock with the help of a screwdriver, the marks left by a tool are direct evidence of the presence of that tool at the crime scene. But if the tool is found with a suspect or even near the suspect, it provides a direct link between the suspect and the crime scene. In the field of forensic science, the tool marks can either take the form of negative impressions or an abrasion or both. Tool mark identification is a discipline of forensic science which has as its primary concern to determine if a tool mark was produced by a particular tool. A tool is an object used to gain mechanical advantage. A tool can also be thought of as the harder of the two objects which when brought into contact with each other results in softer one being marked. There are basically two types of tool marks, impressed also called compression marks and striated marks. Impressed or compression marks are produced when a tool is placed against an object and enough pressure is applied to the tool that it leaves an impression in the object. The class characteristics can suggest the type of tool used to produce the mark. The individual characteristics if present can be used to identify the tool with the mark. Striated tool marks are produced when a tool is placed against an object softer than itself and with pressure applied the tool is moved across the object producing a scrap. The parallel surface irregularities produced by this scrapping action are known as striated tool marks. These are also referred to as friction marks, abrasion marks and scratch marks. Some tool marks are, the, are a combination of both features. Laboratory examination and comparison of tool marks recovered from a crime scene with tools from a suspect can often provide conclusive evidence to link a specific tool to a specific crime scene. This evidence combined with the investigator's information can sometimes produce invaluable links to suspects in a crime. Special precautions which should be taken at crime scene are doors, windows or other openings with hinged or sliding doors should not be opened closed or handled in any manner that might compromise latent fingerprints. These are usually found near the points or of entry or exit. Notes and photographs with scales included in the photo should be made to document any broken, forced, cut locks, lashes or bolts in the immediate area. A tool should never be fitted to, into an impression to see if it could have made the mark. This could render laboratory analysis useless. Two types of photographs are necessary for courtroom presentation as well as investigative purpose. Firstly, overall photos depicting the entire scene and the object which bears the tool mark. Secondly, close-up photos showing the details of the tool mark. These photos should contain a scale and are used for identification and orientation only. Photos cannot be used for actual comparisons. Photographs should de depict the physical location and arrangement of the door, window, etc. bearing the mark. These can reveal the direction of tool use and 
whether or not the tool is physically capable of making the mark. A scale or ruler should be examined, should be included in these photographs. The photos should be submitted with the evidence for examination. Tool marks should be completely documented prior to removal or casting. Notes, sketches and photographs must accurately reflect the position of all tool marks to a fixed reference point and should depict the height from the floor or ground. Tool marks should be examined carefully for any trace evidence. The first consideration should be for the presence of latent fingerprints. Processing for latent fingerprints should be preceded by a careful examination for any loosely adhering particles of evidence. This evidence may be photographed and removed prior to application of fingerprint developing techniques. Requested fingerprint and trace examination will be performed prior to the tool mark examination. On painted surfaces, Bearing tool mark evidence, sample scrappings of the paint should be submitted to the laboratory for examination. Paint may not be readily seen adhering to the tool. However, microscopic examination may reveal minute particles that may be of evidentiary value. Tool mark evidence should be packaged so as not to subject it to damage or loss of trace evidence. Flakes of adhering paint or other trace materials may be lost from the tool while in transit. It could also be damaged changing the microscopic characteristics. The tool should be padded with soft cotton or tissue or covered with a paper bag to prevent damage or the loss of or contamination of trace evidence. Do not place evidence tape over the working surface of the tool. Any items removed as evidence should be clearly marked with the case number, initials of recovering officer and date and time of removal. The evidence should also be marked to show the configuration in which it was located, that is inside or outside, top or bottom, front or back and the surface area bearing the tool mark. Many objects bearing tool marks are, that are detached during a forced entry may be submitted directly as they are found. This includes segments of window or door molding, window or door sill, latches, bolts, locks or door knobs. Where door knobs are twisted, if the mark appears on large items, it may be possible to remove the area containing the mark. If it is removed, a sufficiently large piece of the surrounding surface area must be included to prevent damage to the tool mark through bending, splintering or breaking. Any small removable items such as a door knob, latch plate, lock or hinge should be marked showing the top and the front of the item as it was positioned before removal. Including photographs will greatly enhance the situation for the examiner. If an actual item cannot be submitted for tool mark examination, a cast or a mold can also be made. Firearm examination Firearm identification deals with the comparison analysis of projectiles and cartridge cases found at crime scenes to submitted suspect firearms. The basis of firearm identification is in the microscopic individual characteristics caused during the manufacturing process. Additional imperfections may arise from use, abuse, wear and corrosion. These imperfections caused by manufacture or over time are what makes the tool surfaces in firearms unique. Firearm examiners can also analyze for distance determinations, operability of firearms and serial number restorations. Now tools are often used by criminals to force entry to premises 
and can leave behind evidence for forensic scientists to find. Two tools of the same kind and made by the same manufacturer may look the same, but through use, each tool can acquire differences. It is these differences that makes them unique. Forensic scientists are able to help the courts convict criminals by matching the marks on tools to those found at the crime scenes. Let us study the characteristics of tool marks in detail. Tool marks have two different kinds of characteristics. These are class and individual. Starting with class characteristics, these types of characteristics of a tool, tool mark includes the type of impression, its general shape and dimensions. These characteristics are typically the broad characteristics from which the, the crime investigator can determine what type of tool created the impression and how it was created. But this does not serve the purpose of the identification of the exact tool that actually created the mark. Thus, if only the class characteristics would have been available, then it would have not been possible to distinguish which tool among a pack of similar tools made an impression. For this, individual characteristics are taken into consideration. Individual characteristics Individual characteristics are microscopic characteristics which refer to small, peculiar features exhibited by the tool that are individual to one particular tool. These characteristics include small microscopic ridges and irregularities present on the tool itself. For example, the tip of a screwdriver is never exactly flat but has irregularities near its edge. These characteristics are created by the use, misuse of the tool and its cleaning and maintenance. These characteristics actually permit a formal identification. If such characteristics are available on a tool mark, then it is possible to identify the tool that was used in committing the crime even among a series of identical tools. Let us have a look at different types of tool marks. Depending on the force with which a tool comes in contact with the softer surface, tool marks are divided into two different categories. Firstly, impressed tool marks. Secondly, striated tool marks. Starting with the impressed tool marks. Impressed tool marks are marks occur when the surface onto which the tool comes in contact with is softer in comparison. When the tool comes in contact with the object which is softer than the tool with a huge force in a motion perpendicular to the plane of the surface leaving an impression on the surface, such tool marks are called impressed tool marks. There is no lateral motion. At the crime scene, the unique perfections of the tools are transferred to the surface that makes possible a positive identification of the tool involved in the crime. For example, when a tool like a screwdriver is used by the criminal to forcefully intend a metal surface without penetrating then the impressions it leaves will be helpful in identifying the tool. Coming on to striated tool marks. Striated tool marks are the marks produced when the tool contacts an object with lateral or sideways force. In such a case, the tool is placed against an object and is moved parallel to the object or across the object. Some tool marks can be a combination of the above two types, that is striated and impressed. Let us study some examples of types of evidences submitted in tool mark cases. Types of evidence submitted in tool mark cases includes tools like bolt cutters, 
screwdrivers and chisels, scissors, knives and box cutters, pliers and wrenches, crowbar tire irons, saw, hammers. Now let us study some examples of places and surfaces where tool marks can be observed during investigation to, to understand the concept clearly. Some of the places and surfaces where tool marks are likely to be found during investigation are wire, chains, door and window frames, sections of metal sheets, safe, human bone or cartilages, padlocks and doorknobs, bolts and locks etc. Let us study the examination and matching of tool marks. Examination and comparison of tool marks from a crime scene with the tool mark of the actual suspect tool can act as an important invaluable evidence in linking the suspect to a particular crime and thus the case can be concluded. Some major precautions that are to be taken while examining the tool marks includes Door and windows and other openings with handles or locks at the crime scene should not be touched if they are broken or the locks are cut lest the tool marks or the fingerprints will be destroyed. A, a tool should not be fitted forcibly into the impression which may affect the laboratory analysis. The tool marks should be documented completely including sketches and photographs before removing. If any trace evidence is found on the tool marks, the examination of the trace evidence should be done prior to tool mark examination. Tool marks evidence should be packaged so that it is not damaged as it may change the microscopic characteristics. If the tools are stained with blood or some other biological material, then that has to be cleaned using a soft bristle brush and disinfectants like terge azyme or ethanol etc. The tools are always cleaned with a cotton tipped swabs saturated with ethanol or acetone. The tool mark examination and matching consist of different phases. The scene examiner will examine and photograph the tool marks in situ. If appropriate, the scene examiner will remove the object with the marks and take it to the lab for further analysis. If this is not possible, they will make a cast of the marks generally using a silicone rubber. The first step is to observe some physical features of the tool. Firstly, the manufacturer. Secondly, the type of tool. Thirdly, composition and color. Fourth, condition of tool's finish. Fifth, dimensions of the tool that is overall length, width, etc. And sixth, any irregularities at the end of the tool. The next step is to observe the physical features of the tool marks that is the type of the tool mark, width or diameter of the tool mark, type of cutting motion by the tool, direction of motion of the tool that created that tool mark, position of the tool mark on the tool, a photograph of the impression made by the tool is taken which provides a permanent record of some of the characteristics of the tool mark. If the carrier or the object where the tool mark is located cannot be collected as an evidence, then a cast of the tool mark is made with a dental paste. After discovering the tool, if its class characteristics match with those exhibited by the tool mark under consideration, then the comparison process is started. The tool is observed and a photograph is taken and then the comparison tool marks are made of a softer surface. The comparison is then done between the comparison tool marks 
and the tool marks under investigation using a comparison microscope which consists of two microscopes connected with each other with which two objects can be viewed simultaneously with the same degree of magnification or a stereo microscope. If a match exists then the common origin between the two tool marks is established which then leads to a conclusive report of the case. Let us recapitulate all that we have learnt in this module. To summarize the tool marks which are nothing but the impressions left by the tool at the crime scene, they play a very important role in discovering as well as identifying the tool that is being used in the crime. Now these tool marks have to be documented very carefully and completely including all the physical features of the tool as well as the tool marks lest some information gets destroyed. Now the tools under examination they should be cleaned properly with a soft cloth and ethanol and then an examination that is the matching of the tool marks is done with the help of either a comparison microscope or a stereo microscope.